Okay, so now we are looking at basis and dimension. Okay, basis and dimension. So we have definition. A subset B of V is called a basis for a vector space if it is linearly independent and the span of B equals the whole vector space. Okay. So we have two examples. We have an example. Show that this thing, 1, 0, 0, 1, is a basis for R2. We need to show that this set is linearly independent and generates all of R2. Okay. So we need to show that this set is linearly independent and that the set, the fact that B generates all of V, or in this case, the, 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 this set will generate all of R2, that means that the set of all linear combinations of these two vectors must equal R2. Okay. So first of all, we look at this to check linear independence. We, of course, look at this linear combination setting B equal to 0. And you can see by inspection that you're going to have to have alpha equals 0 and beta equals 0. Right? Okay. Now we show that the set generates R2. Choose an arbitrary vector in R2, i.e., V that equals x, y. x and y could be any numbers. We need to find two constants, alpha and beta, so that a times 1, 0, plus b times 0, 1 equals x, y. But that's also easy, because you can just choose, you, you, in fact, you just have to choose alpha equal to x and beta equal to y, and then this sum equals x, y. So the set generates of all of R2, and so it is a basis. Okay. This example is very straightforward because of the structure of the basis. The basis is so straightforward to work with that it has a special name. We call it the standard or canonical basis for R2, and we denote these basis vectors by E1 and E2. So that's E1 and that's E2. Example, the standard or canonical basis for R3 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, also called E1, E2, E3. Now write down the standard basis for R4. Of course, it'll just be E1, E2, E3, E4, or set containing E1, E2, E3, E4, which equals and E1 is 1, 0, 0, 0. You know, EI has 1 in the if row and zeros elsewhere. Note that the notation E1 is slightly ambiguous. This is the canonical basis vector where the first entry is 1 and the remaining entries are 0. But without context, we don't know how many other entries there are. Oh, I see, because we're saying that here E1 is 1, 0, 0, 0, but here E1 is 1, 0, 0. And of course, here E1 was 1, 0. We have used it to denote a two, three, and four-dimensional vector above. This ambiguity is only removed by reading through the surrounding text and understanding which vector space we're working in. So usually we're working in one vector space, and it's clear that E1, whether E1 is a four vector or a three vector or what. Okay. Now I have another example. Show that one, two, three, five is also a basis for R2. Okay. So now this will be a little bit involved in actual calculation. So we've got to show that this set generates R2 and that it's linearly independent. So First, we will show that this set generates R2. Consider an arbitrary vector x, y. Then we want to find alpha and beta so that alpha times 1, 2 plus beta times 3, 5 equals x, y. Now, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to avoid using augmented matrix. I'd rather write that this is the same as saying that 1, 2, 3, 5 times alpha beta equals x, y. Okay, so now we do row 2 minus 2 times row 1, and we're going to get 0 minus 1, 1, 3, alpha, beta equals, so we have the x leaves the same, then we have y minus 2x there, okay. Now we need to do, we can do row 1, plus 3 times row 2, and also times row 2 by negative. So we're going to get, at the top, we're going to get 1, 0. This is, this is the alpha beta is the same. And here we have x plus 3 times y minus 6 times x. Then here we have 0, 1, and 2x minus y. OK, so what is that thing? To simplify that thing, we have 3y minus 5x and 2x minus y. OK, so we're saying that alpha beta equals, because that was the, the uh, 
the identity matrix on the left of it, so it, that thing just equals left and that just equals alpha beta, and we have that alpha equals 3y minus 3x, and beta equals 2x minus y. So what we're saying is that if you have these two vectors, 1, 2, and 3, 5, and you want to get, someone gives you a vector x, y, and you want to make, express x, y as a linear combination of these two vectors, then you just need to choose the alpha equal to 3y minus 5x and the beta equal to 2x minus y. Okay. And then the given example, you choose minus 1, 4, then what? Then alpha will equal 3 times 4 minus 5 times minus 1, which is 12, which is 12 plus 5, which is 17. And beta will equal 2 times, so the x is minus 1, 2 times minus 1, minus, and the y is 4 minus 4, so that's minus 6. Okay, so the alpha is 17 and the beta is minus 6, yes. Okay, so that shows that this set, this set generates the whole of R2. Now we need to show that the set is linearly independent. But you don't actually have to do any computation, right? Because to check if something is linearly he says, as it says here, we can reuse the computation we've just done. Setting x, equal y, x equals to y equals 0. Why? Because to see if something is linearly independent, what you want to check is this equation, right? This linear combination equals, but not x, y now, but 0, 0. So you're just doing this whole, this whole gas reduction again, but with x and y being 0 and 0. So when you get to the last step, sub in 0, 0, you of course get 0, 0, right? 0 for a, alpha 0 for beta. So that shows that the only solution to this equation, where x and y is 0, 0, the only solution to that is where alpha equals 0, beta equals 0, which shows that those two vectors are linearly independent, right? OK. Now, I think maybe I'll stop the video there. Yes.